The history of Kerala, India, dates back many millennia. Stone Age carvings in the Edakal Caves feature pictorial writings believed to date to at least the Neolithic era around 5000 BC, indicating the presence of a prehistoric civilization or settlement in this region. From as early as 3000 BC, Shara Nadu, currently known as Kerala had established itself as a major spice trade centre. Keralam, the then Shara Nadu had direct contact across the Arabian Sea with all the major Mediterranean and Red Sea ports as well those of the Far East. The spice trade between Kerala and much of the world was one of the main drivers of the world economy. For much of history, ports in Kerala were the busiest among all trade and travel routes in the history of the world. The word Kerala is first recorded as Keralaputra in a 3rd century BC rock inscription rock edict 2 left by the Maurya emperor Ashoka 274 to 237 BC. The land of Keralaputra was one of the five independent kingdoms in southern India during Ashoka's time, the others being Chola, Pandya, Tamarapurani and Satyaputra, a 3rd century CE, Brahmi inscription, found on Etical Cave, Ambukuthi Hill, contained the word Shara, Kadamaputa Shara, the earliest inscriptional evidence of the dynasty Shara. The Cheras collapsed after repeated attacks from the neighbouring Chola Empire and Rashtrakuta Empire. In the 8th century, Adi Shankara was born at Kaledi in central Kerala. He travelled extensively across the Indian subcontinent establishing institutions of Advaita Vedanta philosophy. Contact with Europeans after the arrival of Vasco da Gama in 1498 gave rise to struggles between colonial and native interests. The state of Kerala was created in 1956 from the former state of Travancore Cochin, the Malabar district of Madras state, and the Kasaragod Taluk of Dakshina Kannada. Kerala Reference in Old Testament Many historians locate port cities Ophir and Tarshish mentioned in Old Testament in ancient Kerala. Puvar near Tiruvananthapuram is believed to be Ophir mentioned in Old Testament Bible. Similarly Kolam, another ancient port city, is believed to be Tarshish. <laughs> Kerala in Hindu Purana Many of the legends from native people in Kerala are common with the rest of India coming from the Puranas. Topic. Mahabali Perhaps the most famous festival of Kerala, Onam, is deeply rooted in Kerala traditions. Onam is associated with the legendary king Mahabali, who according to the Hindu Puranas, ruled the earth and several other planetary systems from Kerala. His entire kingdom was then a land of immense prosperity and happiness. However, he was granted rule over one of the netherworld Patala planets called Sutala, by Vimana, the fifth avatar earthly incarnation of Lord Vishnu. Onam is celebrated in Kerala with respect to Maveli Thampuran of Mavalikara and Thrikakarayapan. Other texts The oldest of all the Puranas, the Matsya Purana, sets the story of the Matsya avatar fish incarnation of Lord Vishnu, in the western Ghat mountains of Old Tamil Nadu, which lie in between Shara Nadu and Chola and Pandyanadu. The earliest Sanskrit text to mention Kerala by name is the Aitareya Aranyaka of the Rigveda. It is also mentioned in both the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. Parasurama. <laughs> There are legends dealing with the origins of Kerala geographically and culturally. One such legend is the retrieval of Kerala from the sea, by Parasurama, a warrior sage. It proclaims that Parasurama, an avatar of Mahavishnu, threw his battle axe into the sea. As a result, the land of Kerala arose, and thus was reclaimed from the waters. He was the sixth of the ten avatars incarnations of Vishnu. The word parasu means axe in Sanskrit and therefore the name parasurama means ram with axe. In Treta Yuga, Parasurama retrieved the land submerged under the ocean from Varuna, the god of the oceans and Bhumidevi, goddess of earth. From Gokarnam he reached Kanyakumari and threw his axe northward across the ocean. The place where the axe landed was Kerala. It was 160 kadam an old measure of land lying between Gokarnam and Kanyakumari. 
Puranas say that it was Parasurama who planted the Brahmins and Nayakas in 64 regions of Kerala from Shara and Pandya regions. According to the Puranas, Kerala is also known as Parasurama Shetram, i.e., the land of Parasurama, as the land was reclaimed from sea by him. Prehistory Archaeological studies have identified many Mesolithic, Neolithic and Megalithic sites in Kerala. These findings have been classified into laterite rock-cut caves Chankalara, hood stones Kudakalu, hat stones Topikalu, dolmenoid cysts Calvertham, urn burials Naningadi, and menhirs Palashikalu. The studies point to the indigenous development of the ancient Kerala society and its culture beginning from the Paleolithic age, and its continuity through Mesolithic, Neolithic and Megalithic ages. However, foreign cultural contacts have assisted this cultural formation. The studies suggest possible relationship with Indus Valley civilization during the Late Bronze Age and Early Iron Age. Archaeological findings include dolmens of the Neolithic era in the Marayur area. They are locally known as Muniara, derived from Muni, hermit or sage, and era dolmen. Rock engravings in the Edakal caves in Wayanad are thought to date from the early to late Neolithic eras around 5000 BCE. Historian M. R. Rigava Varier of the Kerala State Archaeology Department identified a sign of a man with jar cup in the engravings, which is the most distinct motif of the Indus Valley Civilization. <laughs> Spice trade 3000 BC to 1000 BC. Kerala was a major spice exporter as early as 3000 BCE, according to Sumerian records. Its fame as the land of spices attracted ancient Babylonians, Assyrians and Egyptians to Muziris in the 3rd and 2nd millennia BCE. Arabs and Phoenicians were also successful in establishing their prominence in the Kerala trade during this early period. According to Sumerian records and Kerala still referred to as the Garden of Spices, or as the Spice Garden of India. Kerala's spices attracted ancient Babylonians, Assyrians, and Egyptians to the Malabar coast in the 3rd and 2nd millennia BCE. Arabs and Phoenicians established trade with Kerala during this period. The land of Keralaputra was one of the four independent kingdoms in southern India during Ashoka's time, the others being Chola, Pandya, and Satyaputra. Scholars hold that Keralaputra is an alternate name of the Cheras, the first dominant dynasty based in Kerala. In the last centuries BCE the coast became important to the Greeks and Romans for its spices, especially black pepper. The Cheras had trading links with China, West Asia, Egypt, Greece, and the Roman Empire. In foreign trade circles the region was known as Mail or Malabar. Muziris, Burkarai, and Nelsinda were among the principal ports at that time. The value of Rome's annual trade with the region was estimated at around 50 million sesterces. Contemporary Sangam literature describes Roman ships coming to Muziris in Kerala, laden with gold to exchange for pepper. One of the earliest Western traders to use the monsoon winds to reach Kerala was Eudoxus of Cyzicus, around 118 or 166 BCE, under the patronage of Ptolemy VIII, king of the Hellenistic Ptolemaic dynasty in Egypt. Roman establishments in the port cities of the region, such as a temple of Augustus and barracks for garrisoned Roman soldiers, are marked in the Tabula Putingeriana, the only surviving map of the Roman cursus publicus. Merchants from West Asia and Southern Europe established coastal posts and settlements in Kerala. The Jewish connection with Shara Nadu started in 573 BCE. Arabs also had trade links with Kerala, starting before the 4th century BCE, as Herodotus 484-413 BCE noted that goods brought by Arabs from Kerala were sold to the Jews at Eden. They intermarried with local people, resulting in formation of the Muslim Mapilla community. In the 4th century, some Christians also migrated from Persia and joined the early Syrian Christian community who trace their origins to the evangelistic activity of Thomas the Apostle in the 1st century. Another Christian migration from Middle East to Kerala was of the Kananaya community. 
Mapilla was an honorific title Mapillai is a Tamil word for bridegroom, because foreign male partner married to local woman, they have been called Mapillai community that had been assigned to respected visitors from abroad, Jewish, Syrian Christian, and Muslim immigration account for later names of the respective communities, Judah Mapillas, Nasrani Mapillas, and Muslim Mapillas. According to the legends of these communities, the earliest St. Thomas Christian churches, Cheraman Juma Masjid 629 CE, the first mosque of India, and Paradesi Synagogue 1568 CE, the oldest active synagogue in the Commonwealth of Nations, were built in Kerala by Cochin Jews. Megasthenes, the Greek ambassador to the court of Emperor Chandragupta Maurya 4th century BC mentions in his work Indica on many South Indian states, including Automela, probably Musiris, and a Pandian trade centre. Ancient Roman natural philosopher Pliny the Elder mentions in his Naturalis Historia NH 6.26 Musiris 4 in Kerala as India's first port of importance. According to him, Musiris could be reached in 40 days' time from the Red Sea ports in Egyptian coast purely depending on the southwest monsoon winds. Later, the unknown author of the Periplus of the Erythraean Sea notes that, "...both Musiris and Nelsinda are now busy places." <laughs> Ancient sources c. 1000 BC AD 100. The Sangam works Purananaru and Akananaru have many lines which speak of the Roman vessels and the Roman gold that used to come to the Kerala ports in search of pepper and other spices, which had enormous demand in the West. Especially, being one of the earliest surviving pieces of literature to have been composed in ancient Kerala, Padarupattu is an important source that describes the dynasties of Kerala Cheras from the early centuries CE, an important source to understand the ancient history of Kerala is the Patanenmelkanaku. Collections of poems by Sangam poets like Parinar, Kapilar, Godamanar, Mamulanar, and Avayar give us information about the Shara kings like Uthian, Nedunshuralathan and Sengutuvan. Salapadikaram, one of the five great epics in Tamil literature, was written by a Shara prince Ilango and refers to Vanshi as ruled by Cheras. A 3rd century BC rock inscription by Emperor Ashoka the Great references Kerala as Keralaputra. Sanskrit scholars of ancient India, Katyayana circa 4th century BC and Patanjali circa 2nd century BC, exhibited in their writings a casual familiarity with Kerala's geography. Topic: <laughs> Ancient Dynasties C 500 BC AD 500 The land of Keralaputra was one of the five independent kingdoms in southern India during Ashoka's time, the others being Chola, Pandya, Tamarapurani and Satyaputra. It had a trading port sometimes identified in ancient western sources as Nelsinda or Nisindi, the Cheras ruled western Malabar coast, the Cholas ruled in the eastern Karamandal coast and the Pandyas in the south-central peninsula. There were also numerous small vassal kingdoms and city-states called Vels. The Shara Kingdom consisted of a major part of modern Kerala and Kanga Nadu which comprises of districts of modern Tamil Nadu like Coimbatore and Salem. Old Tamil and Sanskrit was the language of the region, Malayalam. Their capital was at Vanshi also known as Vanshamuchar. The location of the historical city Vanshi is generally considered near the ancient port city of Musiris in Kerala. However, Karur in modern Tamil Nadu is also pointed out as the location of the capital city of Cheras. Another view suggests the reign of Cheras from multiple capitals. There were harbours of Nora near Kannur, Tindis near Koilandi, and Bikare near Alapuja, which were also trading with Rome and Palakkad past Churum facilitated migration and trade. The contact with Romans might have given rise to small colonies of Jews and Syrian Christians in the chief harbour towns of Kerala. The Cochin Jews believe that their ancestors came to the west coast of India as refugees following the destruction of Jerusalem in the 1st century AD. St. Thomas Christians are the descendants of the converts of St. Thomas the Apostle of Jesus Christ. <inaudible> Ancient religions and ethnic groups Buddhism and Jainism reached Kerala in this early period. As in other parts of ancient India, Buddhism and Jainism co-existed with early Hindu beliefs during the first five centuries. Merchants from West Asia and Southern Europe established coastal posts and settlements in Kerala. 
Jewish connection with Kerala started as early as 573 BC. Arabs also had trade links with Kerala, possibly started before the 4th century BC, as Herodotus 484 BC noted that goods brought by Arabs from Kerala were sold to the Jews at Eden. In the 4th century, some Christians also immigrated from Persia and joined the early Syrian Christian community who trace their origins to the evangelistic activity of Thomas the Apostle in the 1st century. Mapilla was an honorific title that had been assigned to respected visitors from abroad, and Jewish, Syrian Christian, and Muslim immigration might account for later names of the respective communities, Judah Mapillas, Nasrani Mapillas, and Muslim Mapillas. According to the legends of these communities, the earliest Christian churches, mosque, and synagogue AD 1568 in India were built in Kerala. The combined number of Jews, Christians, and Muslims was relatively small at this early stage. They coexisted harmoniously with each other and with local Hindu society, aided by the commercial benefit from such association. A silent revolution was taking place in the social system of the western coast of South India during the last phase of Sangam Age. Towards the end of Sangam Age, Brahmins migrated into this region, and by about the 8th century, a chain of Brahmin settlements had come up, a large number of which were in central Kerala. Temples were constructed, Nambudiri community was evolved. Adi Shankara the exponent of Advaita monistic philosophy lived in the 8th century AD. The whole of Kerala came to be covered by a network of Hindu temple-centered Brahmin settlements. Under their control, these settlements had a large extent of land, number of tenants and the entailing privileges. With more advanced techniques of cultivation, socio-political organization and a strong sense of solidarity, they succeeded in raising a feudal fighting class and ordered the caste system with numerous graduations of upper, intermediate and lower classes. <laughs> Early medieval period c. 500-1400 CE equals equals Topic. Second Cheras. Much of history of the region from the 6th to the 8th century is obscure. A second Shara kingdom c. 800-1102, also known as Kalasakara dynasty of Mahodayapuram, was established by Kalasakara Varman, which at its zenith ruled over a territory comprising the whole of modern Kerala and a smaller part of modern Tamil Nadu. During the early part of Kalasakara period, the southern region from Nagarkoil to Tiruvananthapuram was ruled by I kings, who lost their power in 10th century and thus the region became a part of Thikulasakara Empire. During Kalasakara rule, Kerala witnessed a flourishing period of art, literature, trade and the Bhakti movement of Hinduism. A Keralite identity, distinct from the Tamils, became linguistically separate during this period. For the local administration, the empire was divided into provinces under the rule of Nair chieftains known as Natavajas, with each province comprising a number of Desams under the control of chieftains, called as Desavajas. The inhibitions, caused by a series of Shara Chola wars in the 11th century, resulted in the decline of foreign trade in Kerala ports. Buddhism and Jainism disappeared from the land. The social system became fractured with internal divisions on the lines of caste. Finally, the Kalasakara dynasty was subjugated in 1102 by the combined attack of later Pandyas and later Cholas. However, in the 14th century, Ravi Varma Kulashikara of the southern Vinad kingdom was able to establish a short-lived supremacy over southern India. After his death, in the absence of a strong central power, the state was fractured into about 30 small warring principalities under Nair chieftains, most powerful of them were the Kingdom of Samuthiri in the north, Vinad in the south and Kochi in the middle. <laughs> Rise of Advaita Adi Shankara AD 789, one of the greatest Indian philosophers, was born in Kaladi in Kerala, and consolidated the doctrine of Advaita Vedanta. Shankara travelled across the Indian subcontinent to propagate his philosophy through discourses and debates with other thinkers. He is reputed to have founded four mathas, monasteries, which helped in the historical development, revival and spread of Advaita Vedanta of which he is known as the greatest revivalist. Adi Shankara is believed to be the organizer of the Dashanami monastic order and the founder of the Shanmata tradition of worship. His works in Sanskrit concern themselves with establishing the doctrine of Advaita non-dualism. 
He also established the importance of monastic life as sanctioned in the Upanishads and Brahma Sutra, in a time when the Mimamsa school established strict ritualism and ridiculed monasticism. Shankara represented his works as elaborating on ideas found in the Upanishads, and he wrote copious commentaries on the Vedic canon Brahma Sutra, Principal Upanishads and Bhagavad Gita in support of his thesis. The main opponent in his work is the Mimamsa school of thought, though he also offers arguments against the views of some other schools like Samkhya and certain schools of Buddhism. <laughs> Kingdom of Vinad Vinad was a kingdom in the southwest tip of Kerala, which acted as a buffer between Cheras and Pandyas. Until the end of the 11th century, it was a small principality in the I Kingdom. The Ays were the earliest ruling dynasty in southern Kerala, who, at their zenith, ruled over a region from Nagarkoil in the south to Tiruvananthapuram in the north. Their capital was at Kolam. A series of attacks by the Pandyas between the 7th and 8th centuries caused the decline of Ays although the dynasty remained powerful until the beginning of the 10th century. When I power diminished, Vinad became the southernmost principality of the Second Shara Kingdom invasion of Cholas into Vinad caused the destruction of Kolam in 1096. However, the Shara capital, Mahodayapuram, fell in the subsequent attack, which compelled the Shara king, Rama Varma Kalasakara, to shift his capital to Kolam. Thus, Rama Varma Kalasakara, the last emperor of Shara dynasty, is probably the founder of the Vinad royal house, and the title of Shara kings, Kalasakara, was thenceforth adopted by the rulers of Vinad. The end of second Shara dynasty in the 12th century marks the independence of the Vinad. The Vinadu king then also was known as Vinadu Mupal Nair. In the second half of the 12th century, two branches of the I dynasty, Thripapur and Chirava, merged into the Vinad family and established the tradition of designating the ruler of Vinad as Chirava Moapan and the heir apparent as Thripapur Moapan. While Krirava Moapan had his residence at Kolam, the Thripapur Moapan resided at his palace in Thripapur, 9 miles 14 km north of Tiruvananthapuram, and was vested with the authority over the temples of Vinad kingdom, especially the Sri Pamanabhaswami temple. The most powerful kingdom of Kerala during the colonial period, Travancore, was developed through the expansion of Vinad by Maharaja Marthanda Varma, a member of the Thripapur branch of the I dynasty who ascended to the throne in the 18th century. <laughs> <laughs> kingdom of Kori Code Historical records regarding the origin of the Samuthiri of Kori Code is obscure. However, it's generally agreed that the Samuthiri were originally the rulers of Aral Nadu region of the later Shara kingdom and were known as the Aratus. Aral Nadu province was situated in the northern parts of present-day Malappuram district and was landlocked by the Valuvanad and Pulanadu in the west. Legends such as the origin of Kerala tell the establishment of a local ruling family at Nedirapu, near present-day Kandati by two young brothers belonging to the Arati clan. The brothers, Manikan and Vikraman were the most trusted generals in the army of the Cheras. M. G. S. Narayanan, a Kerala-based historian, in his book, Calicut, The City of Truth states that the Arati was a favourite of the last later Shara king and granted him, as a mark of favour, a small tract of land on the sea coast in addition to his hereditary possessions Aralnadu province. Aratis subsequently moved their capital to the coastal marshy lands and established the kingdom of Kori Kode they later assumed the title of Samudratiri, one who has the sea for his border, and continued to rule from Kori Kode. Samudhiri allied with Muslim Arab and Chinese merchants and used most of the wealth from Kori Kode to develop his military power. They became the most powerful king in the Malayalam-speaking regions during the Middle Ages. In the 14th century, Kori Kode conquered large parts of central Kerala, which was under the control of the king of Kingdom of Kochi. He was forced to shift his capital c. AD 1405 further south. In the 15th century, Kochi was reduced into a vassal state of Kori Kode. <laughs> Colonial period The maritime spice trade monopoly in the Indian Ocean stayed with the Arabs during the High and Late Middle Ages. However, the dominance of Middle East traders was challenged in the European Age of Discovery. 
After Vasco da Gama's arrival in Capad Code in 1498, the Portuguese began to dominate eastern shipping, and the spice trade in particular. Portuguese period The Samuthiri Maharaja of Cori Code permitted the Portuguese to trade with his subjects. Their trade in Cori Code prospered with the establishment of a factory and fort in his territory. However, Portuguese attacks on Arab properties in his jurisdiction provoked the Samuthiri and finally led to conflict. The Portuguese took advantage of the rivalry between the Samuthiri and Raja of Kochi. They allied with Kochi and when Francisco de Almeida was appointed Viceroy of Portuguese India in 1505, he established his headquarters at Kochi. During his reign, the Portuguese managed to dominate relations with Kochi and established a number of fortresses along the Malabar coast. Nonetheless, the Portuguese suffered severe setbacks due to attacks by Samuthiri Maharaja's forces, especially naval attacks under the leadership of admirals of Cori Code known as Kunjali Marikars, which compelled them to seek a treaty. The Portuguese cemetery, Colom after the invasion of Dutch, it became Dutch cemetery of Tangaseri in Colom city was constructed in around 1519 as part of the Portuguese invasion in the city. Buckingham Canal, a small canal between Tangaseri Lighthouse and the cemetery is situated very close to the Portuguese cemetery. A group of pirates known as the Pirates of Tangaseri formerly lived at the cemetery. The remnants of St. Thomas Fort and Portuguese cemetery still exist at Tangaseri. French region in Kerala The French East India Company constructed a fort on the site of Maé in 1724, in accordance with an accord concluded between André Malandan and Raja Vajnavar of Badagara three years earlier. In 1741, Maé de la Bordonnaise retook the town after a period of occupation by the Marathas. In 1761 the British captured Maé, India, and the settlement was handed over to the Raja of Kadathanadu. The British restored Maé, India to the French as a part of the 1763 Treaty of Paris. In 1779, the Anglo-French War broke out, resulting in the French loss of Maé, India. In 1783, the British agreed to restore to the French their settlements in India, and Maé, India was handed over to the French in 1785. Topic. Dutch period The weakened Portuguese were ousted by the Dutch East India Company, who took advantage of continuing conflicts between Cori Code and Kochi to gain control of the trade. The Dutch Malabar in turn were weakened by their constant battles with Marthanda Varma of the Travancore royal family, and were defeated at the Battle of Kalachal in 1741, resulting in the complete eclipse of Dutch power in Malabar. The Treaty of Mavalikara was signed by the Dutch and Travancore in 1753, according to which the Dutch were compelled to detach from all political involvements in the region. In the meantime, Marthanda Varma annexed many smaller northern kingdoms through military conquests, resulting in the rise of Travancore to a position of preeminence in Kerala. Hyder Ali of Mysore conquered northern Kerala in the 18th century, capturing Kori Code in 1766. British period Hyder Ali and his successor, Tipu Sultan, came into conflict with the British, leading to the four Anglo-Mysore wars fought across southern India in the latter half of the 18th century. Tipu Sultan ceded Malabar district to the British in 1792, and South Kanara, which included present-day Kasargad district, in 1799. The British concluded treaties of subsidiary alliance with the rulers of Cochin 1791 and Travancore 1795, and these became princely states of British India, maintaining local autonomy in return for a fixed annual tribute to the British. Malabar and South Kanara districts were part of British India's Madras Presidency. Kerala Varma Pazasi Raja, Kerala Varma Paich Raja, Koshiyote Raja, the 3rd of January 1753 to the 30th of November 1805, was the prince regent and the de facto ruler of the kingdom of Kottayam in Malabar, India, between 1774 and 1805. He led the Paichi Rebellion, Winod Insurrection, Koyote War against the English East India Company. 
He is popularly known as Kerala Simum Lion of Kerala. Organised expressions of discontent with British rule were not uncommon in Kerala. Uprisings of note include the rebellion by Pazasi Raja, Valuthampi Dalawa and the Panapra Vilar Revolt of 1946. In 1919, consequent to their victory in World War I, the British abolished the Islamic Caliphate and dismembered the Ottoman Empire. This resulted in protests against the British by Muslims of the Indian subcontinent known as the Khilafat Movement, which was supported by Mahatma Gandhi in order to draw the Muslims into the mainstream national independence movement. In 1921, the Khilafat Movement in Malabar culminated in widespread riots against the British government and Hindu population in what is now known as the Mopla Rebellion. Kerala also witnessed several social reforms movements directed at the eradication of social evils such as untouchability among the Hindus, pioneered by reformists like Srinarayana Guru and Chatham Biswami among others. The non-violent and largely peaceful Vaikom Satyagraha of 1924 was instrumental in securing entry to the public roads adjacent to the Vaikom temple for people belonging to untouchable castes. In 1936, Sri Chithira Tirunal Balaramavarma, the ruler of Travancore, issued the Temple Entry Proclamation, declaring the temples of his kingdom open to all Hindu worshippers, irrespective of caste. <laughs> <laughs> Modern history <laughs> <laughs> Formation of Kerala state The two independent kingdoms of Travancore and Cochin joined the Union of India after India gained independence in 1947. On 1 July 1949, the two states were merged to form Travancore-Cochin. On 1 January 1950, Travancore-Cochin was recognised as a state. The Madras Presidency was reorganised to form Madras State in 1947. On 1 November 1956, the state of Kerala was formed by the State's Reorganisation Act merging the Malabar district, Travancore Cochin excluding four southern taliks, which were merged with Tamil Nadu, and the taliks of Kasargod, South Kanara. In 1957, elections for the new Kerala Legislative Assembly were held, and a reformist, communist-led government came to power, under EMS Nambudaripad. It was the first time a communist government was democratically elected to power anywhere in the world. It initiated pioneering land reforms, leading to lowest levels of rural poverty in India. <inaudible> <inaudible> Liberation struggle It refused to nationalize the large estates but did provide reforms to protect manual laborers and farm workers, and invited capitalists to set up industry. Much more controversial was an effort to impose state control on private schools, such as those run by the Christians and the Nairs, which enrolled 40% of the students. The Christians, the land-owning communities of Nairs and Namputhiris and the Congress Party protested, with demonstrations numbering in the tens and hundreds of thousands of people. The government controlled the police, which made 150,000 arrests often the same people arrested time and again, and used 248 Lathi charges to beat back the demonstrators, killing 20. The opposition called on Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru to seize control of the state government. Nehru was reluctant but when his daughter Indira Gandhi, the national head of the Congress party, joined in, he finally did so. New elections in 1959 cost the Communists most of their seats and Congress resumed control. <inaudible> <inaudible> coalition politics Later in 1967–82 Kerala elected a series of leftist coalition governments, the most stable was that led by Achutha Menon from 1969 to 1977, from 1967 to 1970, Kunikal Narayanan led a Naxalite movement in Kerala. The theoretical difference in the Communist Party, i.e. CPM is the part of the uprising of Naxalbari movement in Bengal which leads to the formation of CPI ML in India, due to the several difference in the ideological level the CPI ML split into several groups. Some are come to the democratic way and some to the extreme, anarchic way. The violence alienated public opinion, the political alliance have strongly stabilized in such a manner that, with rare exceptions, most of the coalition partners stick their loyalty to the alliance. 
As a result, to this, ever since 1979, the power has been clearly alternating between these two fronts without any change. Politics in Kerala is characterized by continually shifting alliances, party mergers and splits, factionalism within the coalitions and within political parties, and numerous splinter groups. Modern politics in Kerala is dominated by two political fronts, the Communist Party led Left Democratic Front (LDF) and the Indian National Congress led United Democratic Front (UDF) since the late 1970s. These two parties have alternating in power since 1982. Most of the major political parties in Kerala, except for Bharatiya Janata Party BJP, belong to one or the other of these two alliances, often shifting allegiances a number of times. According to 2016 Kerala Legislative Assembly election results, the LDF has a majority in the state assembly seats 91 See also Culture of Kerala Economy of Kerala Geography of Kerala Cuisine of Kerala <laughs>